We've got this little thing. This is it. That's it tonight? Yeah, Christmas. that's it. That's all we got. Now, this is actually, um, Scott requested this in these rags. This is a pretty useful thing. This is a compact SWD connector. Um, it's a 0.05-inch pitch connector with uh, 10 pins, 5 double row. And um, we have these on a bunch of boards, but this particular version, actually, I'll, I'll show what, it, um, what the previous version looks like. It's, it's kind of useful to see. So this... This is what most connectors look like for SWD, and you see there's a box all the way around it. But if you're making a very compact board, you might not want to have like that full shroud. This has a key, but it's not fully shrouded. Um, so it works just the same place, and then as long as you know you uh, need a compact build and maybe you want to put some components around it um, and you don't get in the way of the shroud, then you know you can use this. But it's, it's handy if you're doing, uh, DIYing your own boards that need SWD connector. Next up. Next up. We've got this um, slightly longer than usual pin uh, female header. It's a 2x20 connector. And so the way this works is you can plug this into a Raspberry Pi and it lifts up like a bonnet uh, that you've connected. Actually, I can, I can show it on, um, on a live Pi. So hold on. This Pi, I can, I can disconnect this for now. So let's go to the overhead and I can... Oof. Hold on, unplug this and I can show this off real fast. So we've got here like a normal Raspberry Pi with a bonnet and you'll see we use these nice skinny connections um, for connecting a bonnet, but sometimes you're like, well, I need more space or more clearance. So what you do is you plug this on and this gives you that extra eight and a half millimeters of height. And then these pins are just long enough that you know they can go into another socket header. So they're kind of like stacking headers, but for only like one item at a time. And then of course, you know, if you're using this and maybe you want to like stick a battery in between here, or maybe you just need more clearance, um, it works just the same, but it's a little bit taller. So it's like a kind of a lifter. Okay, next up. All right, next up we've got this uh, NTAG 203 bracelet. We've had these with MyFair Classic compatible chips. Uh, this is an NTAG 203 chip. Um, it's the same kind of bracelet, it, you know, it's, it's stretchy, you can just fit it over your hand, um, but in that little round part is an NTAG 203 with uh, 144 bytes of memory, and it can be read or write from pretty much every modern phone. It's an RFID NFC tag. Okay. Okay, next up is, well, I can't remember the part number. This is the RCWL1601. Yeah. So this is an HC SR04 compatible sonar like a uh, distance sensor but the nice thing about this one is it's the same price but runs on three volts so i'll show it off with a feather basically do this demo so uh, i've got this feather here let me plug it into a battery and what's nice is with the hc sr04 uh, you know you you have it powered over five volts and then the the data out is five volts so you have to use a resistor divider um, really annoying um, with this version, it runs just fine over 3 volts or 5 volts, and you see it's just wired up directly to two GPIO pins. Uh, we've got code for this in make code, CircuitPython, Arduino. It works just like those standard uh, HC SR04 sensors, but it's 3-volt compatible or 5 volts. So we carry both, but chances are, like, I think you just get this one because it works better across the board for everything. Okay. Next up. Mm. We've got the version 2 of the... Um, Raspberry Pi powered Google AIY audio kit. So it's a DIY kit. You see here, it comes in a box um, with, oh, can you go back? I'll just, we'll, we'll talk about all the components. Uh, uh, too forward. So it comes with a speaker. It comes with a fully assembled Raspberry Pi. It comes with a fully assembled bonnet, button, USB cable, cardboard, connectors, SD card. It basically has everything. Like it used to be you would get it minus the Raspberry Pi and you had to included and then maybe there was some soldering now this is all in one um so you don't have to pick up anything else uh you can even just power it from a, you know any usb port although if you get a power supply then you can um you know plug it in wherever you want in the house um it's got a nice big speaker rgb button they've simplified it they've lowered the cost but it's still um the same basic aiy voice kit just better and uh you can put it together in a couple hours and you can even configure it over an android phone so um uh, some, sorry, I'm gonna clean this up. 
Um, some instructions, um, you know, if you if you want to, you can build it and um, SSH in to control it. And like the instructions include information on how to do that. But if you have an Android phone, we found that you can actually just set it up. Um, like I think using Bluetooth or something, and it, it you can set up the SSID and configure it. And then when you turn it on, um, so this is it. You can see there's a Raspberry Pi inside here, and you plug into the back. And there's GPIO for like hackers and audio if you want external audio. But um, there's the button, and so I can press it and ask a question. What, what, should, what should I ask the Google? The weather. Ask the weather? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Google, what's the weather in New York? Right now in New York City, New York, it's 38 and clear. There you go. Tonight, it's predicted to be 36 and clear. So you can build your very own Ask Google AIY kit. And what I really like about this is, um, unlike some devices that listen all the time, you can set it up so that it only works when you press the button. So it's, it's you know, you can make it so it doesn't, but I think it's better if you press the button and yeah. then, you know, it doesn't listen to you all the time and it can answer questions only when you want. So, um, yes, this is a version two. The older version has been discontinued. Um, if you've ever wanted one of these, pick it up. It's easier than ever and less expensive to put one together than before. Next up. Next up, we have the NRF51822 module. Um, K-Town was asking, like, oh, can you send me some modules? And I realized, oh, you know, we don't have these in the store. It's a good idea. We use these in our feather boards, in our Blue Fruit Shield. Um, it's a Cortex-M0 with a Bluetooth radio, I think 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. Has a bunch of peripherals, and then you can program it using Nordic's SDK. There is also support for it in MicroPython, because it's the same chip as the MicroBit, and there's also an Arduino core that you can install to use it. But these chips come blank. And I want to make that super clear. They don't come with a bootloader. They don't come with any code on them. They come like this. Um, and then you solder onto your PCB. You can check out our open source designs and you can you know, recycle those and reuse them as, as desired. Um, but you will need to use a J-Link or something to program it. Um, but it's a really nice module. We like them. Um, they've got a uh, great range. Um, they're FCC, CE, Telic. Uh, authorized already, certified already. They've got an antenna. They've got all the stuff in the module, and they're not too hard to hand solder either. Either so, if you want, you can um, put this onto your next design and add Bluetooth. Okay. I like to call these magneto bandages. Yeah, these bandages bandage. for magneto. Um, but uh, it's neat. It's a way to see magnets. Yeah, we you saw a video online. And I yeah. was like, this is so cool. We we have this is handy if you want to know where magnets are inside something. Yeah, so this is high density magnet film. And I remember having, you know, I, I think I got a piece of this from like Radio Shack in like the 90s, but it was like kind of crummy. Well, this is like really nice version of that yeah. magnetic film. So we picked up a couple of pieces. Um, they're laminated, um, so they're protected because the film is, it's got this like slurry of ferromagnetic components in it. Okay. Um, so this is what it looks like, and it's, it's laminated to so get a small piece. And then like, for example, an iPad, there's all these magnets along here that normally you can't see, but when you put this magnet film on top, yeah. um, they appear. So you can use this to see um, where are the magnets, where are the there magnets. Are the magnets. And, and it has this really cool like effect. Like it's, it's a kind of a green color and then black where there's magnets. Um, if you want to like peek into stuff, um, you know, less, less visible, but still somewhat visible, there's a speaker. So much. The, these magnets are really strong, so you can see them. But if you have like bucky balls, these are also really fun because you can like put these underneath to play with. But um, we thought this magnet film is neat, and yeah, it'll it'll detect any magnetic surface. What we should do is actually um, maybe get an electromagnet and then see how that, that appears works. as well. But yeah, so these little pieces are like you know maybe 40 by 50 millimeters, and um, really fun. Yeah. Okay. Crystals. You wonder why the code is crystals. Yeah. These are crystals. These are actually pretty special crystals. It took me actually a, a bit of time to find. Um, these are no foil back SS16 crystals. Um, they're, they're crystals just like you see on like jewelry or, or clothing or bags or cell phones or whatever, but they don't have foil on the back, which means that light can shine through them. They've got like a rainbowy effect to them. So you can see that's, uh, you know, white light. It does have a rainbow um, kind of diffusion. And what we got these for in particular is you can glue them onto NeoPixels and then they have this like really cool crystally effect. So glue them on with just some super glue or, um, you know, like E6000 or whatever. And maybe I'll zoom in. Although that photo we have is really good. So 
they add a little bit more shimmer. And then of course, when um, they're unplugged, they also have a little bit of, of glitter to them. So if you had something with NeoPixels, maybe like a wearable, you can um, glue these crystals on top. It's really fast and easy. And then even when the LEDs are off, they will kind of shimmer and shine and reflect light. And then when you have them on, especially from the side, um, yeah. you get a really cool kind of like diffused crystally effect. So these come in um, a pack of a hundred. So you get a lot. Um, so they're low cost, and then you can, I mean, you can use them for other stuff, but we particularly got these because they fit really nicely on top of NeoPixels. Here they're being used with 33.5 millimeter NeoPixels, but they'll work um, equally good on five millimeter because the center part is the same size. So yeah, just glue them on top and, and bedazzle your NeoPixels with LEDs. Okay, and the start of the show tonight besides our community, new Lady Ada is? Radio Bonnet. Radio Bonnet, part of our Radio Fruit. This series is, of products. That's right. Ever since we acquired Radio Shack, we've been really <laughs> yeah. going full radio, radio full throttle on the Radio Fruit. Um, so this is the first of four bonnets, like we've had with the Feather Wings and Feathers. We're going to have four total, and this is, I think, the most popular ones we did at first. This is a Laura 900 megahertz radio on a bonnet, um, and we've got some antenna options, and then on the right, we've got an OLED and three buttons. So. Um, we've got some example code here, and we'll, we'll, we're about to publish a guide for how to use this with LoRaWAN. So you can use this either as a LoRa client, which is easiest, so it sends data to a LoRa gateway. Of course, you can use it as um, just a plain, sorry, it can be used as a LoRaWAN client, so it can send data to a LoRaWAN gateway. Um, like we have the Things Network gateway in the shop, which is a, a great gateway we recommend. You can use this as a bi-directional LoRa communication. If you don't want to use LoRaWAN, you can just send data to other um, radios that use the RFM 9X, like our Feather or Breakout. Um, or you can use it as a single channel LoRa to internet gateway. Single channel gateways are not like the best because you have to make sure that your client also knows about that single channel, but this absolutely will work with a Pi Zero or you can use it with a Pi Three, of course. And then over here we have a 128 by 32 OLED because we had all the space left over. And so, you know, especially when you're doing radio stuff, getting information and feedback, like what's the signal strength and how many packets have you sent and did you drop any, um, that's really essential. So we stuck a little OLED over here and then we have three buttons connected to GPIO. So for example, if I press this leftmost button, it sends a packet to the Things Network. And if you look at our um, Adafruit Things Network page, you can see some data popping in. So this might be nicely paired with some sensors. You know, you can connect to these pins to add I squared C sensors if you want. And we've got Python code for this. And then over here, you can connect a UFL antenna, or you can just solder in a wire. Honestly, a wire works really well. Um, and we've done a lot of experiments with this radio set, and the lower radios can go a couple kilometers, even in the city. And then, of course, if you're outside and you're doing, you know, in, in an area without a lot of buildings, um, we've seen multiple kilometer distances. You know, I think the record is like maybe 40 or 50 kilometers that you can get with a, a tuned antenna, a directional antenna. So this is designed for the Raspberry Pi. Um, we've got code. Uh, for it, for use with LoRa, LoRaWAN, or just as like a radio sending it back and forth. Um, and you can use these with our feathers or breakouts on the other side. So you can, you can have like a feather network that's sending data through a Raspberry Pi that then sent it up, you know, through the internet to the cloud or something. Um, because, you know, the feathers are little battery powered ones and this one would be plugged into a Raspberry Pi connected to the wall. So this is the first of our Radio Fruit Bonnets. And that's new products.